I'm Walter Isaacson of the Aspen Institute, and I'm here with Lynn Cheney, author of James Madison, A Life Reconsidered. Let's talk about Madison's friendship with Jefferson, both from Virginia, they meet right after 1776. Tell me about their relationship. Well, and they're both interested in uh, government, in building a nation. And so that forms a key part. Being Virginians, they uh, had that in common. They knew the seasons of Virginia, the, the vegetation of Virginia. They had great classical educations, both of them, so their conversation could range widely. They were both energetic in their efforts as opposed to getting involved in horse racing and gambling and drinking as many a young Virginian did in those days. So there were many things they had in common, but they also had differences that were important to their friendship. Jefferson was more imaginative, more airy in his thinking. You know, he would come up with a notion, for example, that we ought to change constitutions every 19 years to renew the government. And Madison, I think, while inspired by this kind of concept, immediately said, you know, that won't work. He was uh, grounded not just in theory, Madison was, but in reality. And he knew what would work and he knew what wouldn't work. And he brought Jefferson back to earth so many times. He could also poke fun at himself more than Jefferson could. Well, that's a good point. Madison liked to tell stories on himself. And, you know, there was a story about the time he lost his hat mm -hmm. and had to buy one from a little Frenchman that was very funny looking. The, he liked to regale his friends. And Jefferson never would have lost either the horse or the hat like he did, right? Exactly. Jefferson was so well tended by slaves. Now, Madison had slaves as well, but Jefferson was so well tended that, you know, he didn't allow a spot of dirt to appear on his horse. Madison was quite a bit more tolerant of the realities of life. Horses get dirty. You mentioned slavery. In your book, you say both hated slavery and both died owning slaves. I know, and it was, to Madison at least, it was one of the failures of his life. Something that toward the end of his life, he felt desperate about. He grabbed onto the idea of exporting freed slaves to Africa, which many an important American did at that point. John Marshall, for example, Henry Clay. But it was totally impractical, the idea that you could transport thousands of people to Africa who didn't want to go. To the slaves, this was home as much as it was to Madison and Jefferson. So, you know, he grabbed onto this idea, hoping there would be some way out, but there wasn't. And he knew it was a failure. As a historian, how do we historians of the present day look back on something like Madison and Jefferson, the people who have these soaring rhetoric about equality, how do we judge them or not judge them on something like slavery? It's very difficult because clearly slavery is one of those things about which there is no debate. It is wrong. It is absolutely wrong for one human being to enslave another. On the other hand, they seem to be caught in a system that they didn't know how to get out of. I've heard historians say it was a failure of imagination on their part. But, you know, hard as I try to imagine what the solution was, I don't know what it was. Madison had a scheme that involved not only the um, exportation of freed slaves, but financial recompense for uh, slave owners in order to free the slaves. It was a plan exactly like the one Lincoln had, or very close to it, before the Civil War. You know, but it didn't work. And even a mind as great as Lincoln's and Madison's couldn't figure out. And it took a great war to get rid of this great wrong. Thank you very much.